everybody. Welcome, welcome. Hey, everybody. Just so excited to connect with all of you. We're going to talk about Ignite Your Day. Ignite Your Day with JB. I know all of you out there are looking for some new and different content and you want to connect and be a part of the community. So we're going to do some Ignite Your Day content with our amazing author, Deborah Cook. She is a new and upcoming author in our newest book, Ignite Your Love Life. And the reason I asked Deborah to be on the show today is because... As you know, many of us are feeling this new vibration, this change. There's so many different things going on in our bodies, uh, on an intellectual, physical, molecular, like all these different layers of emotion and uh, understanding and integration are happening. And Deborah and I had a really good talk the other day online during her story polish. And I said, girl, you got to come on Facebook Live Mm -hmm. and join us. So welcome, welcome, welcome to the show. Thank you. How are you doing? I'm doing awesome. Thank you. I'm so glad. You know, I want to talk a little bit about what we were, um, what we were into the other day. We were sharing how there's this, this change, obviously this massive, massive change. And I've been blessed to be talking to authors, you know, three and four and five and six authors a day because I've been doing story polishes with everyone. And I get to be in Italy and I get to be in Colombia and I get to be in Australia. And this morning I was in Dubai with different authors and there's this, 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 there's, there's a different feeling everywhere uh, based on where they are in their um, experience of what's happening. But I just wanted to take it an, a, up level and talk about what's kind of the overall, you know, the, the global emotional temperature. And Deborah, just share with me a little bit about where you, where your thoughts are, because I, th- I found them fascinating. That's why I wanted to talk to you today. Okay, well, you know, first I really want to say my heart goes out to those who are, you know, um, who have maybe lost people who have had this virus. Um, it's the probably one of the most trying times and challenging times of pain and suffering for people and change. Um, so my heart goes out to everyone. Um, and, you know, with saying that, um, I, you know, I do want people to know that I really am coming from a place of love and compassion in all of this. Um, I feel blessed and grateful, though, that I really have um, the ability to see the bigger picture in all of this. And the way that I'm viewing this whole thing is that this is an absolute great opportunity for humanity to start awakening. Um, You know, I feel that we have lived in this trap box of illusion forever, um, since the beginning of time. And it's an unconscious, conditioned, consumed, controlled way of being. People most people aren't even aware of that. Um, I've been blessed to have an awakening, so I really get the knowingness of that. Um, So I I, I love what you're saying, and I just want to take one step back, because there are some people who, you know, this is the new curve. This is a new, this is like an unknown new for them. And, Mm -hmm. you know, they, they probably can see that out there in the future or out there somewhere in the distance, is the silver lining and so for those people who are still not open to the conscious collective of this yeah how how can you speak to that just just okay dial it down a little bit for some of the people who this is the first time they're hearing this idea right okay so um i first okay just want to meet with them in the sense of where i'm i'm imagining people are at families are at um you know children being at home you know, a lot of parents are being at home, either working at home or being unemployed. And, you know, my, uh, you know, what I'm seeing is people under a lot of immense emotion and um, fear and anxiety and challenges and children frustrated because they were supposed to be on vacation and hanging out with friends and now they're at home. So the first thing that I would really love to invite people to do is make create an opportunity to start releasing all of these emotions and fears and concerns and challenges that you have. So, you know, I know as a parent that could be, you know, very vulnerable. Um, You may need to have some courage and willingness to do this. But again, this is another great opportunity that's being presented to us. It's an opportunity for bonding with our family to really get to the truth of what's really going on inside. Because 
if we don't do that, then what happens is what we're so used to doing in that fear is having that intense emotion. And then we start, you know, lashing out. We start, you know, there starts being addictions and, and abuse on different levels. And, you know, it it's just a reality of humanity, you know, not yeah. that there's anything wrong. Right. It's just a matter of having awareness around it. And so if we can just, you know, with our families, allow each person to just speak, have their turn, no judgment, you know, no criticism, just full acceptance and loving space for them to share their truth of however it is for them. If everyone can do that, it's a place where we can really bond and connect with each other and really get to the truth of who we are. Yeah, I want to point out, you know, the other day, um, my daughter was going to bed and she's like, Mom, my room is so hot. And I was like, well, open up your window a little and let in some fresh air. And she was like, well, I don't want to let in fresh air. What if the corona comes in through the window? And I was like, it's not going to come in through the window. She's like, what if somebody coughs outside the house and they're on their balcony and it comes in our, you know, through my window? And I said, well, it doesn't fly and it doesn't float and it, it doesn't seek you out. Like you have to, you know, like it was like some, I had to really do some education with her. And I mean, she's not little, she's 12, but still the mind of a 12 year old doesn't really know. Like we, we just hear about, you know, Corona's in the air and this and that. So I thought that was a really interesting thing because the old version of my parenting would be like, oh, it's fine, don't be so silly, that's silly, like that's not gonna happen, and a little bit dismissive, or even just, you know, kind of like, you know, what? why would you be worried? And mm -hmm. I, I noticed that, you know, sometimes irrational thoughts, even as adults, you don't have to be a child to have an irrational thought, irrational worry mm -hmm. is happening. And so with your wisdom, can you talk a little bit about how to quell some of that irrational, you know, runaway, you know, monkey mind that we have? Well, for me, my experience has been if I have any kind of intense emotion, you know, if I've been triggered in a really big way, the first thing that, you know, I invite people to do is to safely release that, safe for them, safe for people around them, safe for their surroundings. And so that can be whatever resonates with you. For me, it's writing. So I will write, I'll get a notebook and I'll write nonstop until I can release the emotion. So we can do that on our own through writing or, you know, if it's anger, we can be punching and screaming to a pillow. <clears throat> Again, whatever resonates. Um, and so it's safe with me, and, safe with others, safe with what's around me. Like there's a mantra that you say. No, based, no, what I mean by that is, you know, sometimes people are enraged and, and they have so much anger. And so I'm saying, you know, create um, in your releasing, make sure it's safe for yourself and safe for people around you and mm. safe for the environment. So release the emotion. It, the most important thing is release that, accept it and release it from your body, but just do it in a safe way. Yeah. That's what I mean and by that. So to, just to, on top of that, last night when we went to bed after the window experience, um, about an hour into it, I was just about asleep. And then my son woke up and came upstairs and said, I, I hear a noise. I hear a noise downstairs. And I was like, what noise? And so interestingly enough, it was, you know, the furnace that makes noise. But he just had obviously never heard of it. It was like white noise to him. But his, uh, his mind was so activated, it seemed, with you know, what's happening in the world and what's out there. And, you know, what if there's thieves or what if people like, blah, blah, blah. and so just hearing the furnace making noise was suddenly, he felt like there was this, this, there was a sense of fear. And I was really amazed by that because, you know, we've lived in this house for two years. He's never heard the furnace turning on and off and on and off in the winter time, which it does constantly, you know, and when it's cold outside, the furnace is constantly turning on and off. And I just was really awakened to the fact that the, the fear, that there's a sense of anxiety that's so elevated that the littlest things can sort of set that off. Mm -hmm. And um, is there something like journaling, fantastic. Is there another idea that you have that can just help with the settling? Because you're so into the divine love and you're so into this sense of love and bringing in love. And I guess that's kind of where I want to guide you is how can we inspire people to feel grounded in this bigger sense of self and love mm -hmm. well like so that you know so the first thing like i say is just releasing the intense emotion and then it's really important to come to presence you know whether that's you know meditation um and that's what i do when i'm clear i can sit and in places of meditation is times where we can ask for guidance we can get our questions answered um 
And again, for P it's really important, like what happened with your son. These are the kinds of things that happen when we have this bottled up fear inside of us. And so again, it's important to have the facts. You know, I know when you turn on the TV, there's just all of this, you know, that's all you see. And a lot of it is very fear-based. You know, I would say most of it is fear-based. Um, you know, so I suggest that people go to the facts, you know, to um, the World Health Organization and the control of disease, you know, like, the CDC, so that you're getting the facts and then allowing each person to be able to share all of the fears that they have. And then, you know, again, meditation is such a huge benefit. When we create that space after, after we create that space within ourselves, whether it's through meditation, it's releasing all of our emotions, that opens up our creativity. Um, we get inspired. It opens up gratitude. So for families, I mean, there's so many wonderful things that we can do together. You know, in that bonding, you know, because I really feel this is what the universe is calling for. This is no accident that this has happened. We need to slow down. We need to get back to being with family, creating that bonding, the creativity, the reflection, the um, in inspiration. I mean, for me, I see this as being a great time for reflecting on those people who have lost their jobs. You know, is this really my dream job? Is maybe there's something else for me? Or, you know, what am I passionate about? Like what really excites me to my core? Um, you know, with families, let's start being creative. Like let's create fun, you know, healthy meals. Let's move our bodies in, you know, in just all kinds of creative ways, whether it's, you know, through dance or, you know, Qigong or yoga or, you know, just creating these fun things, you know, telling, you know, children. reading, let's talk about reading, reading uh, you know, like books, <laughs> right? Like getting some yes. great books. Um, we had, um, the kids were off of school last week. And so mm -hmm. I specifically in the uh, mummy manner that I do things made them come up with a schedule of what, how they were mm -hmm. going to conduct their day and not allowing them to just be endlessly on internet. And so they had, you know, reading time and craft time and sibling time and meditation time and quiet time. And they had sort of structured it. But the reading time was was the one that they were all kind of avoiding and, and being fussy with. And my youngest was, I'm not going to read. I'm not going to read. And then yesterday, so this, the schedule started Monday. Yesterday, she came in last Monday, so a week ago, came in and said, oh, my God, I finished the book. And I was like, how was it? She's like, it was awesome. I can't wait to read another one. It was so good. And I'm like, wasn't it amazing? And there yeah. was incredible in five days this you know major shift about reading and getting um this new sense of learning and of course we all want to say there's so many fun uh, stories in ignite books but reading and and just what you said finding your hobby finding your creativity finding your inspiration finding that inner voice talk a little bit about that that inner inspiration yeah it's um you know so i have um you know we are all true divine love beings which is you know divine love compassion understanding and these are the things that we tap into when we go into presence it's you know that's um like that's the thing that i'm i'm really um inviting people to do is shifting their fearful ways of seeing to seeing through love and in doing that it's starting to live life more consciously start really being conscious of of your thoughts you know because most of our thoughts are fear-based so it start you know start with the um, awareness around our thoughts our way of being um you know how we're acting and how we're speaking what we're saying to ourselves right we have the awareness around that and then what we need to do is embrace that with the three a's which you know yeah are talk about that so Deborah has this wonderful uh, action step in her book, uh, Ignite Your Love Life. And she talks about the three A's and the three C's. And that was totally, I'm so glad you got to it. Tell us a little bit about that. Okay, well, you know, the way that um, humanity operates, that's, you know, the way that I see it is being trapped in this box of illusion. And it's just an unconscious way of being, which is conditioned, consumed and controlled, right? And it's just, it's been since the beginning of time. So there's no blame or fault. It's just how humanity operates. That is what causes our pain and suffering. 
when we really get to the truth of our being, when we start going within ourselves, we start doing the healing in that journey, we can do that by shifting to the three A's, which is awareness, acceptance, and awakening. You know, so in doing that, we can become aware of our three C's way of being, all the fearful ways of being, um, and not through judgment or blame or criticizing ourselves, which is what we're so conditioned to do. This is all about divine love, acceptance, understanding, compassion for ourselves, knowing. Because when we start getting to the three A's, when we start doing that healing process of embracing the three A's to all of our fear-based ways of being, then what happens is it opens up that gateway to awakening. And in that gateway to awakening is, whoa, we really get into our innate wisdom. And that is absolutely mind blowing. That is where you just have endless possibilities in your life. And, you know, you no longer search outside of yourself for that joy or happiness or that soulmate and, you know, that lottery, like none of that stuff matters because you have everything you're fulfilled within yourself. So, you know, that's the, that's the goal. That's the awakening. Um, where you can just live in such excitement and joy. Your life becomes synchronistic. There's really nothing to do. Your life just flows. The universe mm. takes care of everything for you. It's absolutely beautiful. Just as I see this is taking care of us. This, this looks, this, you know, this virus to me is an actual blessing for humanity. It's a time for us. They say go inside. Yes, not just inside your home, go within. Mm -hmm. That's what it's being asked really go within yourself really you know find that truth that truth that space mm -hmm. that divine being and it's done through shifting the three c's you know to the three a's and tell us them again the three c's are okay so it's conditioned consumed and controlled right and they move to the three a's which are awareness acceptance awakening awakening and so you talked about acceptance a little so accepting what is accepting the situation accepting yes. what is around us from an outside perspective but then how do people feel accepting isn't sort of relenting or accepting isn't like how do they stay out of accepting and out of victim how do they accept and stay out of victim well the accepting is um is going into a deeper space like in the accepting of it it's not that um Okay, think how to try and explain this. Yeah, because victim Isn't is he... not a consciousness that you're very aware of. So you have to take a moment to think about oh, that. Oh, I lived most of my life as a victim. I know victim. Okay. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. My whole marriage was, I was being a victim until I finally became, got the awareness around it. So, you know, like that's, um, being a victim is a place where there's no awareness. Right. I mean, I like in my experience, I had absolutely no awareness that I was being a victim. So the freeing of that is when we when we actually are ready to hear it. I mean, people could have told me a zillion times, but when I was ready to hear it, I got it through landmark education. It was the, one of the greatest openings um, and awareness that ever happened for me. Because so how do we, how do people, awareness. you know, sorry to interrupt you, some people are feeling like, you know, I have to stay home, I've, I've lost my job, you know, I have to be indoors, like I, I can't talk to anyone, like they're seeing that side of it. And so right. when we talk about acceptance, the acceptance of those similar situations, it's not so much that you have to be indoors, it's the accepting that you get to be inside, you get to be within, and how, how do we inspire people that that just instead of a relenting like okay i'm inside i'm staying inside it's an it's a awakening or it's an it's an accepting that is from a place of love or almost anticipation or excitement or what's next for me feeling so it's all in it's all in our thinking it's all in how we want to view it and perceive it right so we can either look at it through the eyes of fear or look at it through the eyes of love when we're looking at it through the eyes of love, then that's where we start seeing the opportunities. That's why it's really important, you know, to first, you know, in order to get there is releasing those, you know, pent up emotions that are controlling us that are, you know, and then um, going inward and creating that space for ourselves. Because then in that space, it's all about, it's not about focusing on the limits that 
you know, that this is how I see most people are doing it. It's their, you know, I can't do this, I can't do that. Instead, it's like, wow, look what I get to do. I get to be here with my family, I get this quality time. I can bond with my family. I can actually introduce meditation and we can have creativity and fun together. And, you know, it's, it's a world of opportunity for families. Um, again, it's all about where you want to focus that. Um, mm -hmm. I and also for self, I mean, I've been mm -hmm. saying to everyone, I've been, all my private clients have been meeting with them this week and I've been saying, this is a great week to just stop for a moment. Cause it's almost like, you know, when you come off of a, a treadmill, you still feel like you're moving for a little bit. And, you know, even though we've been, uh, sent in, you know, been put into, or mm -hmm. we're all nicely in sanctuary and we're all getting this time. There's still a part of many of us who still feel like we're on this forward trajectory and to just stop and, and and rest and and breathe and calm and just center again what is it i want what is important to me what what relationships do i want to manifest how do i want to work going forward what is my message what is what is the meaning behind what i'm doing so stepping into that feeling with love i think is is really where the where the planet is going everyone's love and compassion for each other is really expanding we're not it's not a war is over there and fires are over there and a flood is over here and disease is over there and famine is over there it's like we're all having this similar experience we can all relate to have incredible compassion for each other and compassion creates more and more love yeah. and i think that is part of what we talked about yesterday the gift of that of the of the love that we can feel as a planet for each other, for, for the planet, for the environment, for our future. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I mean, and as it, you know, right now, we're really blessed with not having all those emissions, right? Like this is another, there are silver linings or there are so many different silver linings that you can see in this. Um, and again, like all the opportunities for going within, finding that true divine self, I believe this is what the universe is calling for. It's a time for people to go in and really start awakening, doing the work, doing the healing, doing it together as a family. Um, Amen. You know, and Amen. again, it's like really embracing it all with love, like all of our challenges, you know, as we're doing our meditation, as we're asking those questions, you know, it's, we have all of our own answers within. So it's just a matter of tapping into that, asking for the guidance, asking the questions of, that we want answers for, and then just being patient with it, you know, because it shows up and it sometimes will show up when we're in the shower or when we're just about to fall asleep or it could happen, you know, right in the moment of meditation. So it's just really being um, awake and aware to where we will receive our answers because we will give them to us. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Deborah, that's Deborah Cook. She will be publishing Ignite Your Love Life coming out in May. Uh, thank you. I hope that was igniting your day. I hope that you feel ignited and may your life each and every day be filled with joy and your own inner wisdom. Thanks, Deborah. Have a great day, everybody. May your life be ignited. Take care. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye.